Good morning and welcome to Smyrna First United Methodist Church on this first day of May. Uh, we just are so glad to have you here with us. If you would, we ask that you'll take a moment to register your attendance. If you're with us here in the uh, sanctuary today, you can fill out one of these cards and drop it into the uh, collection plates, collection stations that are around the, around the sanctuary. You can also scan the little QR code on it if you're electronically minded or on the screens if you're at home uh, watching us, you can do it there. Uh, today after the service, the UMCOR flood buckets that we've been collecting for will be assembled together. That'll be in the fellowship hall immediately after. There'll be food, as in all good tradition of Methodist meeting uh, that's available for that. And then right after that, there'll be a very short uh, church council meeting and if you're not a member of the council and you want to attend that meeting feel free to stay and find out a little bit more about what goes on here and, and some things that uh, are taking place uh, next Sunday obviously is a very big Sunday it's Mother's Day everybody's got a mother and then also we will have recognition for some of our graduates uh, at that time there's many opportunities for us uh, to serve. Uh, those can be found in our bulletin or in the newsletter that comes out or on our social media pages or uh, through our website. So I encourage you to look for those opportunities and fill yourself in where you feel uh, you can. At this point in time, I'd like to invite Micah Jordan to the podium and he's gonna share some uh, information about the work at Journey Home Ministries. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Good, morning. good to see you good all morning. here. Um, in uh, accordance with uh, this Sunday being Mission Sunday, um, you know, we are packing these flood buckets for that reason, but I also wanted to reflect on some of the missions that we've been doing uh, in our community uh, lately. So. Uh, many of you may already know the Journey Home. They're a group out of uh, Murfreesboro that serves underprivileged uh, uh, and specifically in uh, the housing uh, for Rutherford County. Well, they recently opened an uh, office here in Smyrna, um, being led by Vera Pendergraft. You may have actually had a chance to meet her uh, at our Easter egg hunt this past Saturday, her and, and Janice, who are uh, running, um, who's the, the project manager with them. But anyhow, they, they reached out to me and, and uh, wanted to see if we wanted to partner with them around uh, someone who is uh, a young lady who has a 15 month old baby um, didn't have anywhere to stay she needed some some uh, furniture so we as a church reached out to a bunch of the members in our community asked for some uh, donations and those names up on the board uh, were a bunch of people that helped out you can see that's actually a picture of the apartment that we helped her get into um, i mean she was sleeping in her car she was put up in a, a hotel by her work uh, for a week or so, and, and so we were really able to, to be the hands and feet uh, in our community to help somebody out. So uh, just wanted to personally thank everybody who uh, helped contribute to that and uh, see an example of, of missions today that we've been um, helping with. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Micah, and all those that are listed for, again, your service and your kindness. At this point in time, if you will, find somebody you hadn't seen in a long time, find somebody you haven't known, you don't know, and, and just tell them good morning and it's glad they were here with you. So take this opportunity to get up and circle around.
the music now has stopped and we're making our way back to our seats, let us prepare our hearts and our minds and join me, if you will, please, in the call to worship. Christ asked Peter if he loved him. Peter affirmed three times his love of the Lord. Christ asked us if we love him. We affirm our love of the Lord in our worship. Christ calls us to demonstrate our love in service. Lord, help us to witness to your love in the ways in which we care for others. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join us for our hymn of praise, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, found in your, on the screens or in your hymnal at eight, or 381. <laughs> As we come to this time, let us humbly prepare ourselves to encounter God in our worship today as we can sit, confess our sins before God and before one another. Join me, if you will, please, in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together, My Jesus, I Love Thee.
remains standing for our prayer of illumination and gospel reading. Join me, please. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, 21st chapter, verses 15 through 19. It's after Jesus has appeared to Thomas, and now the disciples are out on the Sea of Tiberias, and they're fishing, and they're having little success uh, with their results of catching fish. And they look to the shore, and they see a person standing there, and he calls out to them, and they don't recognize at first that, in fact, it's Jesus. He instructs the disciples how to cast their nets. Peter recognizes Jesus. He dives into the water, swims to the shore. Jesus invites the disciples to come have breakfast as they bring their nets in with all the food uh, that comes with that. And so today's scripture uh, comes after they have finished their meal. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. And Jesus asked a second time. He said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. And then he asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was sad that Jesus had asked him a third time, do you love me? And he replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure you that when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. And when you grew old, you would, when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and another will tie your belt and lead you where you don't want to go. And he said this to show the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Maybe you seated. Can be, you can be seated. And uh, any kiddos that we have present can go with Christy over here to for a special time of worship and communion of their own in Children's Church. So in our story today, the disciples find themselves in unchartered territory. They've never been here before. By now, they know that Jesus is raised from the dead. Jesus has appeared to, to them in several post-resurrection appearances. So they know this. They know that their journey is not over. But what they don't know is where do they go from here? After all, how does one go about following someone who has been raised from the grave, who has conquered death itself? Nobody in the history of humanity has ever had that dilemma. And so they're not quite sure what's next for them. All they know is their past experiences at this point, and they can reflect on before Jesus' death and resurrection. They know that for three years they journeyed with Jesus and followed his invitation to come and see, a phrase that we find repeatedly throughout the Gospel of John. So as they journeyed with Jesus, they were, their journey was all about being invited to come and see and to be in the presence of, of Jesus and to watch Jesus. He did all kinds of miraculous call, signs and wonders. They watched as they became more and more aware that Jesus was, in fact, the Word became flesh and made his home among us. They've seen how Jesus is one who is, who is full of grace and truth and offers grace upon grace and abundance and life. They've witnessed Jesus do miracles, signs that point to who he is, like, like turning water into wine, the finest wine and abundant wine. They've seen Jesus go about feeding 5,000 men, not even counting the women and children with just a few loaves and fish. They've seen Jesus give sight to the blind. They've seen Jesus even raise their friend Lazarus from the dead. 
as they see how Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So the last three years they've been with Jesus have been nothing short of amazing. And now as they have witnessed for themselves that Jesus is raised from the dead, they know that death was not the end, that their journey will continue with Jesus. But what does that mean? Because everything is different now on, on this side of the resurrection. In fact, the disciples themselves are not the same on this side of the resurrection. They're probably wondering as they stand on that beach looking out at the Sea of Galilee before Jesus appears to them, they're probably thinking, what can we possibly do now? After all, we have messed everything up and messed up profoundly. We have betrayed Jesus as disciples. We have abandoned him. We have denied that we were even his followers. How is Jesus going to use us messed up, sinful human beings? Could Jesus even use them? Especially a resurrected from the grave, Jesus. And so as the disciples possibly are thinking about all this and wondering what the future holds from them, they decide, well, let's go back to what we know. Let's return to our re roots, kind of a safe landing. And so as they, they sit on this beach, looking out, wondering what the future holds, Peter says, I'm going fishing. And all the other disciples decide that's a fine idea, and they decide to go with Peter. Yeah, let's go fishing. Let's do what we know and return to that, that safe, solid ground, so to speak. And so they ready their nets, they prepare their, ne their nets, they get in the boats, they, they shove off out into the water like they've done so many times. And they go out on the water as darkness falls upon them. But even at this ordinary task that they're really good at most of the time, the disciples are complete failures. They fish all night long and they catch nothing. And then finally, as dawn is breaking in the early light, there's this stranger that's standing on the shore, and it's Jesus. But they don't know yet that it's Jesus. They can't recognize him, whether Jesus has disguised himself or it's because of the dim lights. And this stranger on the shore calls out to them that are out there fishing. He says, hey, have you caught anything? Of course, knowing that they haven't. And the disciples say, no, we haven't caught a single thing. And the stranger, Jesus, says, well, here's what you need to do. He said, cast your net on the right side, and you're going to find some fish there. And so, you know, why not? They've been completely unsuccessful all night. Let's give it a shot, they think. And so they throw their nets on the right side of the boat, and almost immediately that net starts filling with all of these fish, we're told 153 large fish to be exact. I can imagine as the net fills with fish, it's straining on the side of the boat and maybe the boat's even kind of, kind of tilting to the side of this net full of abundance. And that's when they know Jesus. They Amen. recognize through this just abundance of fish, this bounty, that Jesus is responsible. They recognize Jesus in the bounty. And so they immediately cry out, it's the Lord! And then Peter, good old impulsive Peter, he's so excited he can't wait to get to Jesus, so he, he jumps in the water and he swims to Jesus as fast as he can. And the other disciples are a little more practical. They're not going to lose this catch of fish. So after straining and being unable to pull it in the boat, they come to shore dragging this net full of fish with them, making their way to Jesus. And so they make their way to Jesus, where Jesus has a, has a charcoal fire going on the beach. And Jesus already has some fish on it, and he invites them to bring more of this miraculous catch they just had. And he said, let's come have breakfast together. Kind of like in a few minutes, we're going to, I guess we're technically lunchtime now, so we're going to have lunch with Jesus as we come to the table here and receive that nourishment. But Jesus invites them to sit around the fire with him and have breakfast and receive his nourishment, his sustenance, his strength. 
And it's after this point then that Jesus gives them an idea of what is next for them. And in fact, he does have a beautiful feature, future in store for them. But they can't go back to the way things were before because everything is different now. But Jesus has something way better, greater works than even Jesus will do in, st in store for them. And so the story that follows and what Jesus offers them after breakfast is a renewed call upon their lives. He offers them a new commission. Jesus invites them to, to kind of throw out most or all of what they understood about being a follower of Jesus before and, and, and take that knowledge, but, but reimagine what following Jesus is going to look like. Because they're going to progress from, from not just coming and seeing and witnessing and learning who Jesus is, but Jesus is going to invite them to, to something greater, a more hands-on approach. And so Jesus is, is offering them a new start. And he offers them a new start individually as he calls Peter aside first, but also all the disciples and ultimately all of us as followers of Jesus, a new start. And so Jesus takes Peter aside, and as the story goes, Jesus asks Peter three different times, Simon Peter, do you love me? And each time when, Simon, when Jesus asks Simon Peter, Peter responds, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And so Jesus does this three different times, one time for every time that Peter denied being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And Peter keeps being more and more sad as Jesus asks, them, asks him this question. Jesus asks him this three times around a charcoal fire. And the only other place we have a charcoal fire in the Gospel of John is by another charcoal fire outside Caiaphas' home when Peter denied being a disciple of Jesus. And so Jesus, or Peter affirms his love of Jesus and Jesus essentially then says, Simon Peter, if you love me, here's what I want you to do. I want you to feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. This is, this is what the new following of Jesus looks like. It looks like feeding lambs, taking care of my sheep. Now it's easy, I mean, we've, most of us have probably heard this scripture so many times. And it's easy to gloss over the profound significance of this moment as Jesus meets the disciples on this shore. Because what Jesus is essentially doing is that he is handing over the family business, his father's business, to the disciples. Jesus is handing over the father's mission to save the world to Peter. Failure, Peter and the rest of the disciples who probably were certain that Jesus couldn't possibly want to use them. This story that we read of Jesus meeting the, the disciples on the beach is so much more than another post-resurrection story because here we read or we hear just a profound show of, of love, a, sh a profound show of, of confidence and faith in humanity that I am entrusting my mission, that my mission is now our mission to save the world, the world that God loves. We see a God who hasn't given up on Peter, even though Peter denied being his disciples. We see Jesus not giving up on the other disciples. And this passage shows us that Jesus doesn't give up on us either. Amen. That Jesus still, even today, wants to use us. That we are partnered. Think about this for a moment. We are partners with our Creator God and the Son of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are partners with God in the most important work in the entire world for all of history. You and me and all of us. May we never forget the significance of this work that God is calling us to do. God is calling us to feed his sheep, to care for Jesus' lambs. Jesus is saying, I am leaving my mission in your capable hands, Peter. 
other disciples, my church, significant. So to fully understand this passage a little bit better, we've got to refer back to John 10, <clears throat> where Jesus shares about how he is the good shepherd. Because as Jesus is inviting us to, to feed lambs, to take care of sheep, and <clears throat> all of those things, Jesus is essentially asking us to step into that kind of role and, and be a sort of good shepherd to the world, as Jesus was. And so going back to John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. When the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. That's because he isn't the shepherd. The shepherd aren't really his. So the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. He's only a hired hand and the sheep don't matter to him. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I give up my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that don't belong to this sheep pen. I must lead them too. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. And so being, stepping into this role until Christ returns of being good shepherd means that we are called to take significant really frightening risks sometimes. It means that we are being willing to make meaningful sacrifices of stepping out of our comfort zone for the sake of others whom God loves, which is every single human being who has ever lived and will ever live. And not only that, but, but I think we can extend that to all of creation and the whole world that God created through Christ Jesus. That's who we are called to take care of. And we're called to not just care for others at a kind of detached distance, but that call of the Good Shepherd is to personally know one another, to call one another by name, to recognize that every single human being is special and unique and a beautiful and beloved child of God. And then, as, as Jesus said, it's not even about your, your one fold in the, the gate. Jesus says, says there's no bounds, there's no limits to who you care for. It wasn't just the Jewish people that Jesus came for, but it was to Jews and Gentiles alike. And so we're to, to take care of, we're to feed, we're to nourish, protect, not just people in our, in our family, not people just in our immediate bubble, but all people, all of creation. We're to nourish and care for the whole world, even in its diversity, as one flock with ultimately that one good shepherd who is Christ Jesus. This is a message of, of Jesus empowering us through the power of the Holy Spirit to actually embody God's presence in the world. Think about that. I mean, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we've all, in a, in a way, got a little bit, a little piece of God with us to share to the world. Now, this is a beautiful, holy thing that Jesus also knows that it's not going to be easy. Jesus knows that sometimes it's going to cost us our lives. And Jesus bluntly tells Peter that it will cost him his life. But the good news that we know is that, that because Jesus is one who offers life and abundance and blessing, we know that as we take risks and as we sacrifice, our journey does not end with a cross. It doesn't end with our death. But that journey continues through resurrection, through ascension, and through ultimately abiding and remaining with the Father. And so what does it look like then for us to feed sheep, to feed Jesus' lambs, to take care of his sheep? Well, the first part of that is that it is a deeply personal and individual call. You know, Jesus takes Peter aside and, and reestablishes Peter and reaffirms Peter and gives him the specific call to be a shepherd to his flock. And so for us, part of that call for, for how Jesus is leading us to, to feed sheep, to feed lambs, to take care of sheep, is, is what are the specific gifts, resources, talents, passions, interests that we possess within ourselves that, that God can use for this life-changing work? 
quote that I really love that I've got on my uh, refrigerator, I think courtesy of Debbie Jones, if I remember, is uh, by Frederick Buechner that speaks to this individual but powerful call of God upon all of our lives. And Frederick Buechner says, your calling or your vocation is a place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Amen. A place where our deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet as we're called to feed sheep. And we all have that place and it all looks a little bit different. So what is that for you? That to ignore those resources, those gifts, those time, the talent, the passions we have for that, frankly means that we're turning our back on Jesus. That we're, I would say, probably even denying Jesus in a way way worse than Peter ever did if we are not faithful in using and taking risks with what we have for this important mission. So that's part of it. But it's also about, about as a whole community of people being called to, to feed Jesus' lambs and care for his sheep. And so I thought it would be useful to just sort of name just a few of the ways that we are about that work here at Smyrna First. And I lift, lift these ministries up as, a, as an invitation for ways that you might specifically be about this work of taking care of Jesus' sheep, but also a praise to God because it's showing, in fact, how Jesus is present here among us through the power of the Holy Spirit and how we are engaged in this work of, of feeding Jesus' lambs and taking care of his sheep in meaningful and profound ways. And so I celebrate that. And so here we go. And this is not an all-exclusive list. We first of all feed Jesus' sheep as we feed hungry families in our food pantry every Wednesday. We feed sheep as we gather in the fellowship hall after church today to pack together items for flood buckets that'll go to people that are impacted by flooding and storms in our area of the country. We feed sheep as we contribute to the UMCOR fund that goes to people in Ukraine even to help with those displaced by the horrors of war. We care for Jesus' sheep as we support nonprofits like the Journey Home that help to with people struggling to have homes in which to live, something most of us don't have to worry about. We care for Jesus' sheep, too, I offer, as, as we look at who the, the sheep are, so to speak, in our community. And we see the beautiful diversity of our community and how many people don't speak the same language as us. And so we've got to acknowledge that feeding sheep is going to mean figuring out how to minister to people that speak another language. We care for Jesus' sheep as we send cards, make phone calls, visit people who are sick or can't make it to worship. We feed sheep as we come to the table to experience communion. And as we take communion to the homes of those that can't be physically present. This is a new ministry. We're just kind of trying to get off the ground, by the way. And we would love for your help with that. But we feed Jesus' sheep when we offer communion. We're caring for Jesus' sheep as we nurture our children and youth and encourage them and lift them up and share with them who Jesus is. And we care for Jesus' sheep as we take time to pray and encourage one another. We also are been, have been feeding Jesus' sheep as we picked up trash for our new Adopt-a-Highway project for a mile of Enon Springs Road. And you're feeding sheep. You're answering Jesus' call when you invite your friends and your neighbors and others to come and see Jesus here at Smyrna First. We'll be feeding sheep this summer as we welcome Project Transformation, a ministry for young adults and children of our community that, to in, in bring transformation in their lives and make their lives better. That's feeding sheep. It's all feeding sheep even as we study God's word together to seek to understand who Jesus is in a better way so we can carry out our call more faithfully. And I offer to you also that we are feeding sheep even as we invest our resources and time in technology for worship so that we can more aptly communicate the gospel message. Caring for Jesus' sheep even means committed, being committed to maintaining and improving our facilities as a primary place where we do this vital work of feeding and caring for Jesus' sheep. It might look like, for example, some things we have going on right now, like purchasing new playground equipment 
This knot rotted and doesn't occasionally pinch kids. It means purchasing a new reliable refrigerator for our kitchen that we badly need so that we can literally feed children reliably and safely and consistently this summer for our PT kids and salt group and other feeding ministry. And I just learned this morning a new AC unit too, by the way. It means doing what we need to do for our spaces here so we have a welcoming and inviting space so everybody can come in and experience that abundant, nurturing, life-giving presence of Christ. And speaking to that essential role, too, that we have in playing a part in this mission, I want to share some words that are on a plaque on a wall on the primacy of Peter Chapel that's right beside where Jesus is thought to have made this appearance. It serves as a loose kind of summary of Jesus' promise to us in John 14, 12, that in fact we as disciples will do greater works than Jesus. And this is what it says. It says, the deeds and miracles of Jesus are not actions of the past. Are not actions of the past. Jesus is waiting for those who are still prepared to take risks at his word because they trust his power utterly. That's what feeding sheep, taking care of Jesus' sheep, looks like. And so this morning, my question to all of you, to all of us, myself included, is do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? If the answer is yes, and I hope it is, then our invitation, our call as disciples of Jesus Christ is to engage in that life-giving, life-changing ministry of feeding sheep, taking care of Jesus' sheep. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I now invite us as we prepare, as we have been meeting Jesus in this place, to, to offer our prayers to Jesus, to prayers to the Lord. Uh, if you have individual prayer concerns that you would like for me to know, that you would like the whole church to, to pray about, please fill out one of the prayer cards in the back of the pews and just drop that in the offering plate and we will be glad to uh, pray for you and there is such power in that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Almighty and gracious God, giver of abundant life, Lord, help us to never take for granted your trust in us to go and, and feed sheep, to take care of your sheep, to take care of, to nurture, to protect, to, to, to sustain every human being, every part of creation that you love so much. And God, we do pray for you to empower us, for you to use us to be truly instruments of your grace and your peace and your healing and your justice in whatever ways and in whatever corners of the world that you are calling us individually to serve or as a whole community of faith. Jesus, lead us, guide us, encourage us, strengthen us for the journey ahead. And we do pray for your nurturing presence, for the sheep to be fed who especially need your tender, loving care. We pray for those who are sick, for those who are grieving. We pray for those suffering from physical and mental illnesses this morning, Lord. We pray for those impacted by war. We pray for those impacted by poverty that are struggling to have enough to eat and a roof over their heads. Lord, the list of, of problems and struggles and troubles in this world is more than we can list in a simple prayer. But we trust in you. We trust in your grace as the one who offers grace upon grace and abundance. And so we offer our individual prayers to you and our prayers as a community of faith who loves you and who trusts you and who is willing to take risks even to death. We pray these things. And we pray in the way that you taught us 
as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, as we, we hear this song from our choir, it's a formal time of, of offering, and certainly we offer our financial gifts by dropping those in the offering plates or scanning that QR code on the screen with, with your camera apps, but our offering is also about so much more than that, because we come offering our financial gifts so that we as a church can keep doing this vital work that Jesus is calling us to do, but we also come offering whatever it is that brings us deep gladness to meet the world at that place of deep hunger. And so I invite you to, to bring your financial gifts, but also to prepare your hearts to meet Jesus here for lunch at the table. And you, you prepare to offer your whole lives to Jesus' grace.
we prepare to come to the table, I remind you or let you know if you're, you're new around here that everyone is welcome to this table. For God so loved the world, amen? Amen. <laughs> that everyone is welcome at this table. You don't have to be a United Methodist. You don't even, in our theology, which I think is beautiful, you don't even have to be a professing believer in Christ yet. Because the founder of Methodism, Wesley, believed that you could meet Jesus at this table in such a significant way that, that you could choose to follow Christ. And so everyone is welcome here at this place. And so Christ our Lord does invite to his table all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live, live in peace with one another. And so as people who have already confessed our sin and received the words of assurance, we come to the table with thanksgiving. And so the Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you. Jesus broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples as he gives it to all of us. And he says, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as you, often as you drink it. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. That Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, and Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit to make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I now invite those that are going to help serve communion to come forward, or others who need to be served first, and I will serve you, and then we will invite the congregation to come in turn. And as we come receiving communion here at Smyrna First, uh, we invite you to come with your hands held out together as someone ready to receive the abundance and the nourishment that Christ is offering to you in this place this morning. The body, the body of Christ offered for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you, the body of Christ offered for you.
We also have gluten-free elements. If you uh, need to receive gluten-free elements, just give a point at those when you come forward and I'll be glad to serve you that. Uh, but the table is open, everybody is invited. Please come as the ushers invite you to come forward.
others who would like to be served in your seats this morning. invite you to stand as you are able as we profess our love of Jesus Christ much like Peter did that day as we sing oh how I love Jesus flood buckets so stick around if you can and be part of that and pizza will be served I ordered I think six extra large pizzas myself so there'll be plenty for everybody so come join us and go from this place of worship encountering the presence of our risen Lord and Savior knowing that you are a beloved child of God go empowered strengthened nurtured in the hope and the power of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, to go and feed sheep and take care of sheep as Jesus calls us to do. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 